Sales volume spiked 73% from last year. How long can this keep going on? Hey, and welcome back to the Vancouver Life Real Estate Podcast and YouTube series. Today, we are discussing the February 2021 real estate numbers because the data is out. And once again, we've got uh, some pretty big numbers to share with you. Yeah, it's just uh, unfortunately more of the same news that you guys have been hearing every month here. Um, the real story here, obviously, being that sales volume is up 73% versus this time last year huge, huge amount of activity happening in our marketplace right now. Yeah. And, and realistically too here, like since last February, do keep in mind, February was really pre pandemic, at least as far as lockdowns and stuff goes. So it was an upward market in February at this time last year. So the fact that we are 73% higher than then really does speak volumes. And I think that, I think that shows uh, mostly in the 10 year average, because we're 43% above that. And it doesn't feel like it's relenting. It doesn't feel like it's slowing down. In fact, it feels like it could be even escalating. It, it really does, Ryan. <laughs> and I think it's escalating across all sort of data points, right? Because I mean, even uh, compared to last month where we saw 56% more homes sell in February than in just January. <laughs> That's incredible. It's no wonder that we've, I mean, the biggest, the other side of this story is that there's just no supply on the market right now. And, and the supply that is there is just, it's crazy. The things that are happening to it. Um, I don't even, I don't even, every month we just seem to be talking about higher and higher numbers and, and record breaking after record breaking month. And uh, the question I have is how long can this really go on for? Right. Yeah, it's it's every month. Actually, well, there's a reason I think that we're bringing these to you every single week because the uh, the pace of change that we're experiencing right now, it's almost unprecedented. And you know, I think what we mean by that is, for example, we saw prices jump two point six percent in one month, right? That's and this no joke. That's yeah, that's a tremendous amount of money that's uh, that it's increasing by. And and this is coming off of January, which was only 09 percent increase only, <laughs> right? So property prices are up three and a half percent just this year, just in two months. And, you know, just last month when we were talking about this data and talking about the, the, uh, the property valuations and rate of appreciation, we were targeting a new all-time high by summer. And right now it's going to happen this month. It's going to happen in March. Yeah. It's you know? like the data changes almost weekly here and, uh, yeah. and when we have to report it as such. Well, yeah, I mean, and and two point six percent, like, in one month is is huge. I mean, last year, all of last year was roughly ten percent, right? And we're talking, you know, I hope that doesn't become the average. I can tell you that because, the, and the thing is, is in the past, is it has, it's proven that it can do that kind of performance, which is scary because of the all time price um, that we're near right now. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but I, I think that we're kind of headed in that direction with with interest rates being as low as they are. I don't know how this is going to slow down. Right mm -hmm. now. And to give you like a dollar figure kind of uh, example of that, that 2.6%, that equals a $28,000 jump in your average Vancouver home in one month. Well, why don't we talk about what the average price is now? Yeah, average price uh, in February for typical Vancouver home, it hit uh, $1,084,000 in yeah. February. And that's up 6.8% from this time last year. Wow. And, and, and of course, 2.6% of that increase happened just last month. Last month. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think you're going to, you're really starting to feel, um, you know, a lot of people jumping in the market now because this is, this is a dangerous kind of place, I think, honestly speaking. I, I, I mean, I'm even looking at buying a home for myself right now and I'm scratching my head being like, if I buy this thing, is it going to go up in value? <laughs> it's a real, it's a real question that I have. Right. Um, but then we're setting new, new numbers and new records every month. So it probably will, you know? Yeah. People, it is a very tough decision to make and people are like, is, how sustainable is this? You know? And I, I think people have been asking that question for 
about six months now, very seriously, because we've seen it continue to go up and up and up. And now we're seeing it, like we talked about earlier, accentuate, right? The rate of increase is increasing as well. Yeah, and so people- is going up. Yeah. That too, of course. Yeah. So people are kind of, I think FOMO has really come into it now because people feel like if they don't get on the train, they may never leave the station. It's very interesting too, because the last time we had a marketplace like this was 2016, right? 2017. And uh, it was very easy at that time to blame foreigners. Um, but our borders are closed. Um, yes, you are seeing some sight unseen purchases happening in places like Squamish where the foreign buyer's tax does not apply, at least for the time being. But generally speaking, we're dealing with local supply uh, issues and local demand issues um, fueled by low interest rates. So what happens when we all end up getting inoculated, the borders open, permanent residents start coming through the borders, um, and the government is going to definitely want that to happen because the chances of them buying homes is higher property transfer tax, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I, I just don't know how the prices are going to flatline here. I don't, I don't, I don't see it, you know, short mm -hmm. of, short of making money more expensive, which is something that's going to happen. Right. And of course, a big part, I think of what's driving this demand as well is, is like you touched on, right. There's, there's no demand, uh, there's no supply at all. You know, we are actually 21% uh, below the 10 year average for supply. Oh, yeah, a big exactly. number. So we're big hitting number. record sales volumes, and that's obviously pushing down inventory. So 21% below 10-year average. I mean, it's, it's again, it's still this perfect sort of storm, this perfect fire. And, um, you know, let's, let's talk about sales ratio. That yeah. pushed up to basically 45% sales ratio across the board last month. Um, for context, for context, it was 27% in January. So it, it, it almost doubled. It almost I'm, doubled in one month, the sales ratio. Which is why we feel that this market is escalating. Yeah, right? exactly. Um, and it, when you break that down too, um, some interesting numbers when you actually look at it in terms of uh, asset class. So you look at detached homes, for example, 41.8% um, seller's market for detached homes. That's, I mean, like we said, 20% for three months, that's a seller's market. 40, we're almost at 42% here. But then townhomes are incredible. It's 61.8% or it's 62%. <laughs> That's good luck trying to find one, yeah. honestly. You can't. You know? And then apartments, the, actually the ones we thought that were going to take a little bit, we're well into a seller's market again. Yeah, For, this is worth uh, digging into a bit here. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, they're at 41.7%. They're at like. Yeah by comparable, right? So they're performing Hondos. like single family in mm -hmm. terms of yeah. in terms of the marketplace, right? And they were not there two months ago. Oh, God, no. That no. rate, you know? So when you look at the sales to active listings ratio for, for condos, I mean, you know, you go back to November and it was only 22%. Yeah. Right? So we are basically, yeah, again, basically double. And overall, like keep in mind, the sales to active listings ratio has been in a seller's market since about October of last year. But it's been on a steady incline since about January of 2019. It's wow. almost, you know, it's almost a straight line up other than, you know, a quick little dip uh, in April or March, April when things shut down. COVID and then now it's just gone straight up. So wow. we're seller's market now since October of last year. That's exactly when I started to feel it. Mm. You know, um, oh, I really feel it now, but um, it's funny because we, we, we just thought that maybe it was going to be a little slower in its return, but it's certainly not the case. And I, I, I really feel that's a function of when you run out of homes to sell, people move to half duplexes. When you, move, when you run out of half duplexes, you move to townhomes. That's why townhomes are experiencing a huge increase right now, a huge surge. So the question I have is, are we going to see an even bigger surge in the coming months for apartments? And that's where the supply is in our marketplace. So generally speaking, I think you're going to see uh, a, a bigger push there in the coming months. Yeah, I totally agree, and and we're starting to see it now, uh, in in the in the areas that were slower through COVID, right? Yeah. You know, we saw our the Langleys and uh, sort of the Fraser Valley uh, uptick during COVID, sort of with the um, with the condo uh, attention and, and sales volumes, but uh, downtown, as we know, got uh, decimated pretty hard. Yeah, and everyone's starting to come back now. And, and we are seeing this on the ground. So condos now are starting to appreciate in value as well, especially downtown Vancouver. Yeah. Um, 
Dan, how close are we to our all-time high? Uh, yeah, this is interesting. So if we all remember kind of 2016, 2017, 2018, that was as far as the HPI uh, tracker index goes, hit the all-time high in May of 2018. It dropped about 15% since then, and it's been on its way up uh, for about a year and a half now. We're only 10,000 bucks, $10,000 away from beating the all-time high price ever recorded. I, it's just, it's incredible. The state of the economy, you know, everything that's going on, the, this is how it's playing out. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm, I, it's fascinating. Um, and I don't know, paradoxical at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And again, when we talk about this escalation, right, when we were talking just back in January, way back two months ago, we thought it would take approximately till summer for that all time high price to be broken or met. And, you know, sure, a 2.6% pre, excuse me, appreciation month will certainly change our metrics. And now, like I said, we are well on track to break the all-time high for March. So we'll be talking about that in, in April and a lot of other people will be too. Yeah. And I mean, when you look at the medium price, for example, it jumped last month by $65,000. One month, the median jump. That's that's a giant number. And yeah, we're at the all-time high now, right? So we're yeah. at the median price is eight hundred sixty-five. sorry, $875,000, which as of right now is the all-time highest the median price has ever been. Right. And we're the average price for your, um, sorry, your, your home as well has gone up by another $54,000. Like, mm -hmm. and that's an all-time high as well. Yep. Uh, 1. Yep. 1. 1. 1.148 million. Like, that's right. So guess what? Next month, <laughs> if that HPI price uh, does what it's on track to do, you're going to have all three pricing indicators at all-time highs, median, average, and HPI. Or are we going to hear from Tiff Macklin? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, got an, he's keeping an eye on it, right? Um, there's early exuberance, as we mentioned last week. Um, I think I well, it, it was it's excessive, excessive exuberance. Early signs of excessive. <laughs> right, yes, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so... But whatever that means, uh, we laugh about it, but it doesn't feel like, you know, that 2016, 2017, when then there was a lot of public outcry mm -hmm. about home prices and, and the, the rate that they were going up. And I, I think it's because it's happening so quick and, you know, people have been watching it. People are still largely confused as to why home prices are going up uh, at the rate they are. But the fact that the numbers in March are so big and so strong and the fact that they're going to repeat in april i think that public outcry is going to become very public starting in yeah mid-april my 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 question i guess around that public outcry because i think in 2016 it was really easy to blame foreigners yeah it was and that was mm -hmm. the outcry that's where we saw the foreign buyers tax come in right mm -hmm. um and honestly there wasn't a whole ton of data that supported it right at the end of the day i think a lot of studies actually showed that that wasn't the issue shock. Um, whereas where, what I'm interested in is what is the public going to be crying about? Because the borders are closed. You know, this is domestic demand. Um, if anything, it's going to hopefully highlight policy issues instead of trying to point the blame on someone. You know what I mean? We need to build homes faster. We need to increase our supply. We need to incentivize developers. There's all kinds of things that, that, that we could do mm -hmm. that aren't being done. Um, and I just hope it doesn't go to you know a, a political blame, which is what it was so easy for, for people to do. When at the end of the day, there really isn't something to point your finger at now. I mean, the coronavirus exacerbated this, but then we closed the borders. So we can't put our finger on something like foreign buyers anymore. Right. Uh, I just, I wonder what the outcry is going to be. It's going to be very interesting. It's going to happen. It's just, what is the argument? Yeah. I think the public outcry this time around will be pointing the fingers at the bank of Canada saying, you know, you put, you made interest rates too low. You made it too easy for us to have access to funds, right. even though stress test is still in place, for example. And uh, yeah, it, you bring up an interesting point because, you know, we're here, we are 21% below, the 10 year average in inventory. And yet where's the outcry for making it easier to build housing? That's what I'm saying, you know, and these are the real issues. The real issues at play here are, you know, they're fundamental supply issues, right? Um, and until those things really get addressed, I, I'm not, I, I'm not convinced that, uh, 
Uh, I don't know if the public is going to get it right when they start pointing their fingers. Right? Yeah, there's going to be a lot of um, stimulus, of course, and quantitative mm-hmm. easing saying, look, you didn't you, sh- you did that to a level that was uh, excessive. Yeah, I right. You, you kind of you, you, the government overstimulated. Yeah, I could see that. I, 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 f- I that. personally feel they did. Right. Yeah. I mean, and we're seeing it now. Right. Because they are lifting asset prices. OK, they've succeeded in that. Now they got to try and turn this or slow this freight train down. That's right. And it doesn't happen quickly outside right. of, of course, extreme taxation or, you know, a huge difference. Yeah, killing the momentum, right, is what would happen. And that's not healthy either. There needs to be sustainable growth. And this well, is getting at a pretty, pretty macro level here. But, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, it's, it's, I, I, I'm, I'm really interested to see because it, the finger pointing here is going to be policy driven, I think. And that's going to maybe create some kind of change. We'll see. Yeah, it's like the pendulum is swinging so far on either side and that they're kind of making extreme changes instead of just slight corrections. Yeah, I agree. You know, the, the level of, of QE was so big yeah. that it overstimulated. And then by the time they kind of realized that, oh, the pendulum's way over here. Well, and I mean, weren't, gonna we throw the high, in... weren't we the highest of all G7 nations in terms of bailouts? I believe, yeah, Canada's one or two. One of the highest, anyhow. Anyways, um, just put it on the shoulders of all the young new buyers. <laughs> anyhow. Well, um, they're, they're affording it. Again, I, I literally just got off another Zoom call with a mortgage broker and, and brought it up because it, I had a, another colleague in saying 90-ish percent of his first-time home buyers were buying with gifted down payments mm-hmm. from parents who had leveraged real estate. Right. right. So uh, this this new conversation really echoed exactly that. And it wasn't a leading question. It was like, how many of your first time home buyers are doing this with gifted down payments? And he just said all of them. Wow. Wow. People are leveraging real estate to have their family members buy more real estate. Yeah. I, I actually just got off of a Zoom call with a client and she just told me the reason that she can buy a home now is because her grandmother has sold her home and wants to pass on some of that money. Mm-hmm. It, it's like the only way, right? Yeah. yeah. It, it's, <laughs> Largely. <laughs> well, and we're seeing that because when you have 90 to hundred percent of first timers buying with this gifted payment, largely from real estate, I mean, imagine you lived in a place like, uh, or had a property in Bowen Island or Sunshine <laughs> Coast, right? These, these areas they saw upwards of uh, 34 and, and 33% appreciation year over year, respectively. And so, wow. you know, if, if you made that much money in real estate then, or in, in your appreciated value in equity, you may have things like, hey, my son, my nephew, my whoever, uh, they, they want to buy a home and, and I've got all this, this equity in a property. Maybe I can share that. Well, and at the end of the day, they're, they're really just putting their money back to work, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of that money stays in the family too. So it's just better going to work in the real estate market, right? So it goes yeah. back in. Yeah. Um, so those, those two were outlier examples, right? Those were the extremes. Yeah. Um, was that uh, one and two <laughs> out, of, out of curiosity? I believe so. Yeah. Those are yeah. the, the two biggest sort of GVRD areas uh, that saw the largest uh, property price increase year over year at 34, I, I, 33%. I never, I never would have pegged Bowen Island. Like I, I like, I love Bowen Island. I love going there, but I, I never would have thought it would have had that kind of performance. And Sunshine Coast, I mean, I felt like it had a bit more development potential than say Bowen Island, but like, man, woo, <laughs> big numbers. <laughs> yeah, big numbers. Well, I mean, you look at Bowen Island and, you know, every month there's only going to be eight homes sold there. Yeah, so when inventory right. is so incredibly low, like, you know, Bowen, I- Bowen Island has 15 homes for sale right now. Wow. That's nothing. Right? It's, yeah. So when you have people competitively going after the same product and it is that minimal. Yeah. Drives it up. You're going to see it just absolutely fly. Well, and speaking to that, I mean, let's talk about detached sales because when you look at where they're up, just detached Mm -hmm. from this month last year, we're up 79.7%. So it's no wonder there's no supply of single family in the marketplace. And Mm -hmm. it's no wonder that we're townhomes are in a 62% seller's market because that's the next asset class and there's nothing left in terms of, of detached homes for, for people um, at that price point. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. So detached homes, I mean, they went up almost 14% year over year in GVRD, right? To uh, $1,621,000 this wow. month. Wow. And when you're talking about this low inventory and this high demand, 
You ready for this? 43% of single family homes sold over ask last month. Oh, and I mean, that's, that's the highest dating back to, you guessed it, 2016. Wow. Another that's incredible reference. So 43%. So that's, I mean, it's not 50%, but let's call it, you know, almost, almost one of every two homes sold over ask in February. And then when you look at uh, condo sales, they're also up 65.8% from February of 2020, which is again, a huge, huge number. I mean, price is now 697,000. Um, or two and a half in percent, two and a half percent increase year over year, right? Mm -hmm. Which that is a bit more modest because that's a year over year number, not a month over month number. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, and remember how we were tracking downtown condos, right? Yeah. If yeah. you uh, if you remember from March to the end of November, uh, condos dropped in value by fourteen percent. That's right. Yeah, on average, yeah. down to uh, six hundred and forty five thousand dollars. Since then, we've had three straight months of appreciated values. They're up 50,000 bucks. Well, we did thousand dollars in three months. We did say, I mean, we were a little wrong on the time, but we, we did say when it came back, it would come back and it yeah. would, it would shoot out, right? Like that, that's the down, downtown's historically done that, mm -hmm. right? And, and it's doing it again. Um, but townhomes, yeah. let's just, unless you want to touch on that one more time. Oh, I just want to say from that 14% drop, it's only taken three months to increase by seven and a half percent. Holy so, oh, cow. Half of its losses are, are uh, already realized. Yeah, that's right. Wow. Holy cow. And then we look at townhome sales. Um, they're up 82.4%. 82.4%. I don't think I've ever seen that like that high. For GVRD, uh, yeah, that could be a record. That's, that's really, really high. Um, anyhow, new price is up, uh, 7.2%, uh, $839,000, um, which is, uh, about a 3% increase from January, 2021. Mm -hmm. right. That's a big jump in, in one month. So here we are, uh, it's right now we're recording this Friday, March the 5th, and you know, we can track the daily sales here. So already in the first five days of this month, We've already seen over uh, about 1,070 homes have sold. And the day's not over. There's going to be another 50 or 70 or so registering today. So when we're talking about this escalation, uh, right now, we are on track for about 5,200 units selling. We are going to be an all-time high. Yeah, that would break it. That'll break it. Yeah, so... Previous record, March uh, 2016, saw 5,190 units. We are currently on pace to just break that record wow. to be the all-time highest for any month ever. And you know, just just speaking to that townhome number, um, mm -hmm. excuse me, I had um, a friend of mine actually buy a townhome in, I want to say September of last year, September of October of last year. Um she paid 730,000, somewhere in that range out in Ladner. And um, we're about to list a place in the same, uh, it's the same size, same year, all of that stuff. Maybe a, a, a bit better location, but generally speaking, not really. Um, we're listing it for 849,000. And that's, she bought it six months ago. Wow. <laughs> 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 it's and these stories, you know, we hear them multiple times every single day. Yeah. And I think it's 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 these type of stories that causes a lot of the FOMO and makes a lot of people feel like you can't lose in real estate. Yeah. And it's it's a dangerous place to be because you can and, and people who enter for that reason often think, oh, I'll just sell in six months or a year and and, and I'll make a bunch of money. And yeah. then you know, something is going to change during that time. We'll have a downward cycle and they're gonna yeah. be like, Oh, I didn't plan to hold this long and I have to sell at a loss. It's like that's why we always say, hold your home for yeah. eight plus years. Go into it, it with that mindset that you're going to live somewhere for eight plus years. If you want to expect to realize a potential appreciation from it. Yeah, I would, I would tend to agree. I mean, getting into it for six months is a, is a humongous risk um, uh, and, a, and a lot of money at stake, right? Yeah. So, so when we talk yeah. about prices, um, you know, currently again, five days of data, but uh, tracking it closely, median price, which is already a record in, in Feb is up about five more K so far this month, average oh. price already up about 40,000 for the month. Oof. Yeah. So get ready for those all time highs next month. And then uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, <clears throat> maybe our outlier communities. Um, 
let's uh, maybe just touch on Chilliwack here and how wacky Chilliwack's getting. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just mentioned how in GBRD, 43% of detached homes are selling over ask. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Valley, who's kind of received the, the, the lion's share of, of um, interest and in activity since uh, sure. the coronavirus, saw about 73% of homes sell at or over ask last month. Uh, what's the... <laughs> I mean... I had, that's incredible. I mean, list prices mean nothing. That's yeah. what that shows me. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's almost like the, the list price is chasing the market yeah. value. Yeah. I mean, yes, people are still listing a bit under because they know they can create a, um, a uh, multiple otherwise. offer scenario almost instantly here. But um, yeah, I think, I think people that are listing even low agents are, are often being surprised. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, um, 3285 Victoria street caught a lot of people off guard. Um, this is that East van detached home that was listed for 1.728 million received 36 offers and sold for $872,000 over ask. Now that's all that really the articles will tell you because there's, there's a bit more to this story here. And it seems like a crazy high number until you know that what you can do with the land, right? Dan, maybe you want to touch on that a little bit. Yeah, it kind of came across as your typical single family dwelling that had uh, achieved this incredible over ask number. Uh, But it's actually more of a developer play. Um, You can build and and also um, rezone on this property. So it is actually what it sold for is actually probably close, close to what it's worth. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was listed very low, in our opinion. So um, while we do hear similar stories, you know, these one, these 200 over asks, 850 was a a very extreme example. Yeah. But um, yeah, definitely recognize that property is actually valued right around there because there's uh, there's profits to be made by someone who's going to build on there. Context, 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 context. Right. It's a big part of the reporting that Mm -hmm. that, that didn't really make it out. Anyhow, um, moving on, uh, realtor.ca huge numbers that they're producing right now. Um, They received 1.7 billion views in 2020, which is up 73%. That's 196,000 properties viewed every hour. Yeah. (laughs) We don't even, we don't have 196,000 properties listed. (laughs) No, no. And there's a, there's a very interesting correlation there, right? So we just talked about how um, detached sales are up about 79%. And yet here you go, you've got interest levels, people that are online Mm -hmm. and Realtor.ca obviously services Canada, um, you know, it's up 73% in views. Interesting how those are are kind of similar, right? So the the interest is there. People are out looking at homes at the rate of almost 200,000 per hour. And um, Mm -hmm. they're not just looking, they're buying. And that's why the numbers are up as well. Wow. Well, let's let's touch on maybe uh, one of our favorite guys here, uh, the CMHC. And how they reverse course, because um, as we all know, they came out and predicted that the housing market was, you know, going to go down by somewhere between nine and eighteen uh, percent last year, and they couldn't have been more wrong. Um, and they finally come out and said, "Oops." Yeah, it only took about <laughs> nine months of data going the other way before they finally kind of came out and said, "Okay, we were wrong," and you know what? It's okay to be wrong, you know, and and. Uh, obviously they were incredibly wrong and and I think took far too long to adjust course and kind of admit it, but yeah, I don't don't work there. I I can't make that call, but uh, they have now they've changed it and they've changed it to the degree of now saying, well, uh, they actually expect prices to rise about another 10% this year alone um, with the average forecast at home to exceed a million dollars in Toronto for the first time ever. Wow. Well, and that's far more in line um, to what's going actually happening. Um, mm-hmm. it, it, that even may be conservative still, I just, I feel bad for people that, you know, maybe use this as a forecasting tool, hoping to wait for their opportunity to buy. I hope they adjusted course before they CMHC did. Well, yeah. And, and definitely used uh, more than one data point as far as predictions go, because, yeah. uh, I don't know, trusting just one company or one realtor or, or one mortgage broker, it, it's always best to get uh, information and predictions from a bunch of industry professionals so you can make a sophisticated and educated decision. 
sage advice. Mm -hmm. Um, So again, here we are. I think a big question is how long can this go on for, right? Because it's happening way too quick. It is unsustainable. You know, at this pace, if we look at February's numbers, what are we going to see a 36% appreciation this year or 30%? It's too much, right? Yeah. Not at all time highs. That's crazy, right? If something will get curbed, it has to. Yeah. So what we've seen already, while the Bank of Canada has so far, you know, held true to their um, not raising any rates till 2023, and you could just Mm -hmm. imagine the pressure that's about to be applied to them. Mm -hmm. uh, The banks do operate independently. And basically for the first time since uh, March, I think, since they started really dropping rates quick, we have seen rates climb. Mm -hmm. Uh, About 50 basis points too. That's it. So, you know, last week you could literally get in somewhere in around 1.59. A lot of banks now are telling people that it's starting with the two. 209 is uh, what a few people have been approved at this week. And they, um, you know, they're not rock bottom. They're still incredibly cheap, but here we go, yeah. right? We've hit bottom. Yeah. We've started the uptick. And while maybe 50 basis points isn't enough to stop this market, it is a step in the direction of slowing it. Yeah. And, and I honestly think it, it I, I obviously I don't like, you know, people having to pay more for their homes. But at the end of the day, generally speaking, if it slows down the rate of appreciation and doesn't require the government to come in and, you know, use tax or something to that effect, I'm all for that because that that's competition driven. So that makes sense to me. And, and, and another thing that, you know, we've, we've recently seen is, um, you know, the stock market in general has had um, a relatively big pullback um, in the last week. Um, there's a, a fairly large sell-off. Uh, and this is due in part because the bond markets are starting to go up, right? Um, I just wonder if this is going to have an effect on buyers in the short run. I know a lot of people that are invested in, in in the marketplace and we're taking profits out of that and putting it into real estate. So we'll see if that continues to take place. That is, I think, all of it for us this week. Uh, thank you so much for listening. As always, we do ask, please uh, give us a subscribe uh, if you're watching this on YouTube or uh, you know, a nice follow on the podcast. And we will be back next week because uh, there's a lot of data that's going to be coming, <laughs> a lot of changes, and we love keeping you uh, well and informed. Please, for more information, visit our website at thevancouverlife.com. See you guys next week.